My name's Isaac, better known as Izzy the Bricky. This week, Drew and I finished off that repointing job. I secured a, another extension, and I also discuss underpricing jobs. You guys are watching the next instalment of Izzy the Bricky Weekly. Morning, and welcome back to the channel. A few months ago in February, we were on a repointing job. We've been called back because the client wants the top of this garage wall repointing and the gable end over there in lime and mortar. This is going to be in sand and cement. So right now we are going to get stuck in, crack on. Scrape off the excess muck, just like that. We'll do the final bit of titivating, which is tidying up and give it a nice brush, and polish up all the bricks. Uh, we have pretty much grinded out most of the top seven courses, is what the client wanted doing. Um, we are about to tackle the last little bit of pointing, so that's cool. Um, Drew was telling me about his weekend, and Drew had a very unfortunate weekend, so we'll go review Drew's motorbike. Unfortunately, some little scrotes stole your motorbike, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. From Derby into car Derby park, the into, bit. Yeah, Derby into car park. So we had it all locked up, and they, what did they do then? They, what they did was they snipped this bit here. Yeah. And they tied it. Oh, so this the, is the, the ignition. Yeah. Cables and they've just tied it together. So they've hot, like hot wired it. And you can start it without keys or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so Drew drove here this morning. This is how I started it. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> and off he goes. Tell him how you got your motorbike back. I uh, managed to just catch up to one of the lads. So I managed to. No. You like remove the lad from the bike. You, you grab the lad I, off the bike and hold him ransom. I removed remo <laughs> yeah. the lad from the bike and then I sat him down. He and, sat uh, him down. He uh, messaged his mate to leave the bike and everything. So I was like, fair enough. I've started walking towards it and uh, I found it ditched in a field. So Ditched in a field. Yeah. But you got it back, which we is the main thing. Yep. <laughs> oh, that is a steep hill as well, Drew. <laughs> you poor bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Drew went down there, down a massive steep hill to go go to the toilet, and then his bike wouldn't start at all, so he's just had to push it up the hill. Just gonna hold it next time. <laughs> yeah, I told you not to go, mate. <laughs> so, in typical English weather fashion, it started raining. However, we have finished pointing these top seven courses. So right now, because these are engineering bricks, they get dirty really easy but they also buff up really easy. So what I'm using is a damp towel on one side and a dry towel on the other, just to rub any smear marks we've got. So you can see here, like there's just a couple of mortar marks. So what we do, we just run along buffing up anywhere where we're smudged, because like I say, these engineering bricks, they do smudge easily, but they also buff up easy. And then we just swap to our dry side of the towel, give it a nice rub, and then that leaves a really nice, clean, sharp finish for the client and the job. So we've just finished tidying the front. Like I say, I just like to leave the front pretty tidy compared to when we first found it. So cleaner than we first found it. Client's happy, we're happy, and often you get more trade just by having a clean, tidy job. As you can see, we've polished and cleaned all the bricks. And hopefully in a few months or maybe a few years time, you won't really tell the difference because the colour match is perfect anyway on that note me and drew have to repoint and rake out the last gable on this job so we're going to crack on doing that so we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit well there we go we've wrapped up for the day not too much filming um but we've just been getting stuck in today and uh man i just feel bad for drew he's had nothing but bad luck with that bike and then you know for some people just uh 
ruin his bike. Like it's totally, um, he can't even bump start it himself now. So he's got to have a day off work to go take it in to get looked at and hopefully fixed. A couple hundred quid to get fixed. But it's just messed him up for the next couple of weeks. Um, he lives about 40 minutes away from me, so he's got to have to get taxis or lifts into work. Um, and it's just, it's his livelihood. That is, like, that is his way to get food, because he lives on his own. Way to get food, way to get to work. He's got a second job as well. So he used to do his like other work, back and forth, using his bike. So yeah, I just felt bad for him. So just lots of, uh, Bigging up Drew today, making sure he's all right. But we will commence filming tomorrow, a bit more repointing. We love it. We'll catch you tomorrow morning. Good morning and welcome back to the job. So yesterday we finished grinding out this panel. Drew is just going over all the small bits, getting off all the old sand and cement. We're actually gonna replace this brick here and this brick there, just to tidy that reveal up. Now, last time I made a video on this repointing, I had quite a few direct messages on Instagram, link on screen right now, um, asking when you know, as a client, your mortar needs to be replaced. So if you come in close here, you can just see that this is starting to flake away. Just by running my finger off, I'm able to dig in about three millimeters. And if you take a pick to it, or any hard tool you've got, you can see just how soft and warm this old material is. And that's basically a good indication that you are about ready to need a repointing job. So if you're in the Derby or Nottingham area, holler at me. Anyway, we're gonna crack on. There we go, right. We've just grinded out, only took about an hour, not even that, to do this entire thing. Go over it with the pickaxe and all those little bits and bobs. So right now, we'll throw a mix on. If you're interested in mixing up, I'm gonna make a video in a few days, Wednesday, on how to mix up with lime mortar 3.5 NHL. So yeah, that's coming up. Now, we are doing a couple of brick replacements and we've done a few already on this job. But the thing to bear in mind, if anyone's ever doing a brick replacement on an old building such as this, especially on a window reveal, you see how here the brick is really close up to the timber. And you see this, it just looks like normal mortar, but it's not. It's actually the reveal for the inside of the window, in, like inside the building. So we've got to be really careful when removing these bricks up this reveal, because if we're not careful we can easily bust through the plaster on the other side and I unfortunately did that downstairs um, so we've just got to be careful when replacing these bricks anyway take these out we're gonna throw a mix on and get pointing up a really decent mask because we're going to be using lime and it is quite aggressive especially if it gets into your lungs and for that reason we're also using some gloves i'm using these ansel gloves they're waterproof and also therefore dustproof just to just to protect our hands while dealing with this chemical it to it's just all boiling up perfect mix should be able to stay together and make somewhat of a snowball Dan. So we've just thrown our mix on video on this. We'll be going live on Wednesday just how I like to make 3.5 NHL lime mortar. Now the brick replacements and how I like to get the bricks out. We're just using the SDS drill to go around the entire masonry joint, so bed joint, perp joint, and then the bed joint once again. And then we're going to use the SDS drill and just the pick to wiggle off these bricks. What I'm doing, I'm leaving some of the old brick 
in there because if I disturb that, it could easily disturb the lime mortar plaster, what we have back there, and it's just got paint on. So that's finished. So I'm gonna end up pistoling a brick, but you won't notice. Okay. So something I actually wanted to talk about before I got distracted by all of my brick replacements, these windows are somewhat new. So the window fitters have come and put these in and then done some dodgy, dodgy brick replacements. Check this out. I mean, who in their right mind think, <laughs> thinks that is an acceptable finish? So I've said to the client, we'll run around today and try and tidy up all these little bits, even if we end up putting a brick slither in, but just tidying up some of this mortar, mortar around it, I don't know. We'll figure that out, but come on, window fitters, sort your stuff out. I mean, So I just had a phone call from um, the extension where we put the steels in uh, a few weeks ago and the block work went up. I set all the blues out there. Now I gave that job to a different bricklayer because I didn't have time to do it because of the extension I was building. So um, I pulled this job in because that bricklayer took over that one. And then next week I was meant to be going to the mansion build again to do some snagging and move some windows about. However, I've just had a phone call because the weather this week has been so bad up in Nottingham, the other Brit there can't do that job anymore. So I'm gonna wrap up this job this week. I'm gonna push back the mansion build because it's only moving a few windows about. And then next week we're gonna be jumping on the extension once again. So I'm buzzing about that. So yes, that's why it's always good to have multiple fingers and multiple pies. had a ride good tidy up i'm actually quite impressed with ourselves compared to the last time we were here and just how clean and tidy it is but we've really focused this time on making sure we are using that dust extractor um so this gable here i am really really pleased with the finish on this is amazing i'm quite good that it's on this flat roof and no one can actually see it but at least the job is done right uh tomorrow all i have to do is a tiny bit of pointing in this corner sort out that mess and do these brick replacements and then a few more bits and bobs uh, the customer wants me to have a look at so i'll probably spend the day just having a little nose at all of them anyway just started raining again so it's a perfect time to knock off so i'll catch you guys tomorrow morning sand
morning and welcome back so today drew is off he's out sorting his motorbike and trying to find some cables which are very expensive 250 pound he's been quoted to replace some cables for his ignition anyway um so i'm on my own today so we've finished pointing off the rest of this wall and now we're going to be working on some of these brick replacements and just trying to tidy this up so I'm going to be doing some brick replacements. I've only got three bricks left from uh, last time I was here. So somehow I need to make this right with these three bricks. So what I'm going to do, because we have this large gap where the window and these three bricks here are, I'm not going to take these out and pull them across. What I'm going to do, I'm going to plumb down from these bricks here and just make sure that everything's in line and then we'll have a mortar joint there it will still be better to the eye than having a massive mortar joint there and here i think before it was a right mess so i'm gonna see what i can do to tidy this up so we're gonna crack on do some cuts yes yes There we go. So we have finished repointing this wall, the gable, done all of our brick replacements. Now I've just got a list of things, what the client has given me just to go have a look at, a bit of snagging from when we were previously here, a few little bits and bobs I've missed. It'll probably take me all day, maybe even into tomorrow. But one of the things the client pointed out to me last night was the chimney stack. He wanted me just to have a look at some pointing just around the corner and on this side because there's a couple of missing joints now this roof was replaced about seven years ago and when the roof was replaced they did some lead work on this old chimney stack and they also repointed it however they repointed it in a very very thin layer of sand and cement and i'm going to bring you in close now and i'm just going to show you the damage sand and cement can cause to a chimney stack like this and why it just should not be used. So you can see how they've done their sand and cement pointing on top of our lime mortar pointing. Now it's only a thin layer and they've not done the nicest job, but I'm not here to pull people's work. So there's their sand and cement. I'm just gonna give it a little chip. You can see it's a very, very thin layer, but you can see behind just how soft all of the old lime mortar is it's basically all turned to dust you can see how easy this is all just chipping away so basically this thin layer of sand and cement only a couple millimeters worth has basically destroyed all of the old lime mortar because it's trapped all of the moisture in behind the brickwork and now everything behind has just turned to dust what you can do to see how damaged the old lime mortar is behind the pointing is just put your hand on a brick and give it a little tap. So this one feels really solid, okay? But this one here, that one and that one, I can feel the entire brick vibrating and I can also see all the bed joints and things like that moving. So this brick feels loose. That one does, that one does, that one does, that one, that one really does. But you can hear how that one's a lot more solid. So we'll have a chat with the client about this, but this is one of the reasons we really do not use sand and cement on old line mortar. And don't get me wrong, I've been guilty of doing it, but now I've a lot more educated in line mortar. There's a reason we don't do it, people.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, yes, sir. I'll bring it back to tomorrow, man. Yes, sir. I'll see you a bit. Top man. Cheers, bro. There we go, we are all wrapped up. I finished off all the snagging and little bits and bobs really quick. So overall, 75 square meters were pointed. So tomorrow we are gonna hop on to the next job. The client is really happy. Nice, clean, tidy job, and that's what we are after. We have wrapped up the job. I've just spoken to the client. He's very pleased with the entire job and everything like that. Um, within the next few months we are going to repoint the chimneys we spoke to him about them um i was surprised that he got two chimneys repointed and it cost two grand that's what he charged that's what they charged anyway while we're speaking about cost i want to speak about the cost of this job now i did this job uh labor only and i had an inkling when i started doing the job and when i first released the first video on this job that I may have underpriced it. Um, I did, but that's cool. So we'll go over the costs and things like that, how much I charged to do the entire project and perhaps what I should have charged and what I will charge in the future. 75 square meters, that is what we raked out and what we pointed in. So the overall job was 75 meters. So starting on the back, the big back with the nice gables 30 square meters the flat roof was 7.7 square meters the big long side that was 24 square meters the front gable with the window in the middle that was 3.5 square meters and then the front of the property was eight square meters and then we've got other little bits and bobs all around the stonework we count that as about two square meters so 75 square meters overall total labor costs of the job turned out to be three thousand eight hundred pounds so three thousand eight hundred pound i actually don't know what that works out square meterage let me do that there we go just did some quick math so um three thousand eight hundred pound total labor co costs uh drew an i works out about 50 pound a square meter Okay, uh, 50 pound square meter. The cost of materials were about 500 pound and the front scaffold was about 300 pound. So yeah, pr a pretty cheap job, I think. And the client was quite happy with the cost. But um, yeah, so how did I reach the figure of 3,800 pound? I agreed a day work price for Drew and I with the client when I first started the job. Uh, and within the first few days, I thought, oh, wow, my day works really low for what this should be or what I'm actually doing. But it's not fair and it's very unprofessional for me to change my day work part way through a job. It's just I just wouldn't do that ever. Um, so I stuck with my day work. Um, and yeah, that's what it came out to. A lot of people have said and since I have done this job, um, repointing depending on where you're in your, where you are in the country but i've never understood that prices overall in the country should always be the same i don't understand why people are charging more in london than they are down north i mean up north but anyway people are saying it should be about 75 pound to 120 pound depending on the repointing um and depending on the finish so it should have been perhaps about £5,625 if we're going off the rate of £75 square metre and obviously if we're doing £100 square metre it would be £7,500. So a massive price difference between my £3,500 um, to those two figures there but it is what it is. I'm overall really happy with the job. From now on when I do a job I will work off a square meterage, meterage basis just because I know exactly what I'm dealing with. When I first took this job on, I'd actually never done any lime mortar repointing. And I'd done one rake out job and a repoint job previously, but that was with sand and cement, and it was from a mate of mine. And his exact exact words were, I'm not bothered what it looks like, just get it done. Um, so yeah, from now on, I'll probably charge a little bit more. Some things I didn't think about while, let's say, pricing this job. Um, was the wear and tear on tools. I burnt out two four inch grinders, which 
set me back a couple hundred quid maybe, 150 pound. Um, yeah, lots of bits and bobs like that, which I had to just absorb and take that cost on the chin. So probably overall, I only made about, I don't know, 2,300 quid for 13 days work, which is really good if you're not a bricklayer and it sounds quite decent, but yeah. Anyway, I don't normally talk about costs and things like that, but I'm a bricklayer, not a businessman. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, and another reason why I agreed a sh like quite a small day work rate for Drew and I, Drew always stays the same, unless I think I can get him more money and I think he deserves more money, then I'll increase his day work. I manipulate my day work up and down, depending on circumstances. And when this job popped up, it was when um, a load of things cracked off and I needed work for Drew. So I don't mind having a week or two off work because um, I'm quite financially stable the way I've always like had a buffer, let's say. Um, but I always make sure Drew has work. So I needed to make sure that I cut, like price the job somewhat really enticing to make sure that we got work, basically. Um, otherwise, it would have meant having a few weeks off work for Drew and myself, and no one really wants that. So yeah, if you want any repointing doing, it'll be about 75 to 100 pounds a square meter from now on. But if you're in the Derby and Nottingham area, hit me up, I do a good job. Um, I'm a decent bricklayer, but not a good businessman, for now. Just a side note to add on to that clip. Overall, I still am really pleased and quite proud of that job, Regard regardless of the costs and things like that. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and so is the client. So, yeah. Everyone's almost a winner at the end of the day. I learned a lot about lime mortar repointing, and I learned some more about business, which is always fun. Anyway, we'll catch you guys in, not the next one, tomorrow morning. Morning. <laughs> morning, right, we are back on the extension where we put these steels in. This is the extension I spoke about a few days ago where we're now doing the brickwork. Another brick there did all the block work. He's not got time to come back to the job, so we're gonna be doing the brickwork. Today, I am uh, blasting the roof timbers in with the joiner yeah, just to help push along the job, while Drew loads out all of the old bricks we're gonna be reusing. These are from the knock through, they're from the original house build itself, and the previous extension. So, a bit of joinery while it's raining, and maybe later, if it dries up, we will be blasting some brick working. <coughs> yes. So the weather today is shocking, even though it looks like it's sunny. I can assure you it's not. So we're tidy in the van, again. Um, <laughs> how long do you reckon it'll last like this, Drew? Clean and tidy. We'll have to see the end of Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give it, I'll, I'll give it about two, four days. days. Yeah, four days, we'll keep it like this, and then it'll be mucky again. How often do you lads clean out your vans? We do what? When do we do our? Oh, I think that last time we did it was like, um... When we were leaving the mansion build, wasn't it? No, we cleaned it out when we left. Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we cleaned it out last week and it's already a mess again. <laughs> let's let's try and keep it like this. This is this is on you, anyway. Me? This is all on Drew. Uh, yeah. about. Stop pulling up my wood. <laughs> oh, there we go. Surprisingly, I've called it a day. It's set to rain all day, and I'm probably one of the only Brit there who just constantly works in the rain, so I'm sick of it. Even though it's brightened up, I'm going home. I've got loads of admin stuff to do, loads of videos to work on. So I'm gonna go take Drew back. Hopefully he can get his motorbike fixed today. Might even go get a haircut, go see the Turkish barber, see what they reckon to my hair. <laughs> God knows what happened there. Right, on that note, we will catch you next week when we are blasting in all of that Brit work. So, have a good weekend. Oh no you won't, it's the week. I don't know when I'll include this part in a video, but for those who don't know, I have been editing and doing all of my filming on this phone right here. 
and I have finally invested in a nice brand new laptop so I won't be editing on my phone anymore and things like that so I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all the support from you guys because it's helped me be able to afford a really decent laptop and hopefully I'll be able to produce some better quality videos for you guys and we won't be editing on the phone anymore anyway on that note I'll catch you in a bit